Hey, welcome back to another video. So in the last one, you got to see my uh, High Pinion 30. It was definitely not in my Jeep anymore. So in this one, I want to talk about the axle that I'm swapping in and maybe even get started on it. Let's go. Yep, there's your problem. All right, so I'm gonna try and uh, go over this axle real quick and just give you some of the basic stats on it. So this is a high pinion Dana 44 out of a mid to late 70s F-150. Uh, some of the differences over a stock axle is it's gonna have a larger ring and pinion, making it much stronger. It's gonna have larger axle shafts. Uh, it's gonna have larger brakes. Uh, it's five inches wider. So a bunch of advantages over your stock Dana 30. Um, this one in particular is equipped with 538 gears and a Detroit locker. We've also added uh, chrome alley axle shafts, front and rear. Um, sorry, inside and out, not front and rear. It's running Warns premium hubs. Did have new rotors and pads, however the rotors look like uh, they've been on the Titanic for a little bit. So one of the big challenges you're going to find when you try to swap an axle um, if obviously if the axle isn't originally available in the vehicle you're going to run into your connection points where your control arms and your steering and all that stuff bolts on it will be different for a different vehicle because it's a different vehicle so there's some companies out there that help you out with some of that you can either get universal kits where you have to measure everything and try and make that work or in my case i uh went on to new venture motorsports new venture you venture, you venture something. Anyways, they're the ones that uh, Lightbright likes to pimp all their stuff. So this is New Venture Motorsports Trust Kit, which is basically the easy button for swapping in a High Pinion 44 into your TJ or LJ. So what that does, so what that does is basically weld onto the housing, gives you the perfect spot to connect your upper control arms. The lower control arms, your shock tabs, your coil mounts, um, really cleans up a lot of the things that would be really difficult to set up and weld and all put together. So that is now on there. So one of the big downfalls of my stock Dana 30 axle was steering. Um, the stock steering box is just barely adequate for 33s and when you get to 35s, you know, if you watch some of my videos, you can really see that I'm fighting the steering wheel. It's running out of assist um, if the front end is on the downhill side and there's more weight on it or if there's if you're bound up in the rocks you, you just can't steer so with this I wanted to do a hydraulic assist setup and I've never seen hydraulic assist I'm sure you probably could somehow put it onto the factory linkage um, but it's more commonly associated with a crossover style steering so crossover means basically your steering is going to cross over from knuckle to knuckle and then knuckle to the pitman arm. So in order to do that, you need flat top knuckles, which means the high pinion Ford knuckles wouldn't work. So I went out to a junkyard and picked up a Chevy square body Dana 44 for an axle and took the outers off. And when we talk outers, we basically mean from the ball joints out. So this has got Chevy flat top knuckles which by flat top means it's got a flat top right along the top of this steering knuckle. And what that allows you to do is this is the factory knuckle from the Chevy. It allows you to machine the top and put on this high steer arm, which will allow you to then have crossover steering without having the Haltenberger linkage, which the factory Jeep has, where it goes from this knuckle up to the steering box and then off of the middle of that link to the other steering knuckle. Really kind of complicated system, but anyways, this is a much better driving system, much stronger. So what are some of these issues I'm gonna to have to overcome? Um, I'm gonna be able to bolt up the control arms, no problem. That, that looks like that's not gonna be an issue. My next issue is going to be making the three different bars that go across the front of this thing all play nice together. So we're going to have a tie rod that's gonna go from the lower knuckle to the lower knuckle on the top of the lower knuckle. You're going to have your drag link, whichever, I'm never sure which one is which. One might be 
The tie rod and drag link are your two steering arms, basically, your two steering links. But your secondary one, which is going to go from the top of the knuckle to the pitman arm. So, right, we're going to have a bar that goes across here. We're going to have a bar that goes up here to the pitman arm. And lastly, we're going to have a track bar. Now, your factory track bar mount is down here, but New Venture offers an accessory high mount. So I purchased that. That allows you to basically have a your track bar up here so that it's not running into where your crossover steering is going to be. Imagine if that closes and you've got a link across here, you're going to have a track bar in here. Just gets a little too tight. So you've got this other one up here, which allows us to mount the track bar up top. So having said that, Trying to imagine that this track bar is going to be here to the frame and then this drag link to the pitman arm. Whether those are going to play nice or not, not sure. But lastly, man, I'm going to have to do some serious editing because I am verbal vomiting like you wouldn't believe. So, lastly, my link that's going to go from my passenger knuckle to the pitman arm looks like it's not going to play nice with the stock sway bar. Um, the sway bar will be hooking up to right here. So i got to figure that out. So if that means I have to end up running a Curry sway bar, maybe that's what I'm going to have to do. This next Venture Motorsports kit really simplifies a lot of the things. And if you were to swap this axle in and just wanted to run 35s and factory style steering, everything would be straight bolt in other than welding on the truss kit. After that, everything would bolt in and line up on the, all the factory mounts. But I mean, we can talk all day. Basically, I want to get this thing under here, see if it can sit on its own weight, get it off these sketchy jack stands. Um, I don't know. I had to quit talking. Talking isn't getting it done. I got to get to work. All right, just leave me alone. Give me a second. Axle footage. Yeah, no, it's just it's just a truck axle.